Today, I'm gonna to show you the ultimate recovery environment for Windows PCs. This is kind of like Windows recovery if it were on steroids. Stay tuned. In several videos, you've probably heard me mention Hiren's Boot CD. In fact, I've actually used it in quite a few videos, but I've never made a video dedicated to the usefulness of this boot environment. This truly is a boot CD that everyone should have in their arsenal. So today, I'm gonna to go over what it is and why you should download it. But first, we gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now you know what? It seems like nothing good comes without controversy. And this is the case with Hiren's Boot CD. So before we really dig into this video, I really need to take some time to explain this controversy and the reality behind it. Hiren's Boot CD started out as a multi-boot recovery CD that included options to boot into a customized Windows 98 and a customized mini Windows XP, as well as numerous DOS utilities. However, it had a really bad reputation for including pirated retail programs. And to be honest with you, I don't know when the first version of Hiren's Boot CD was released, but in my research, I found references to version 5 coming out in 2004. This also is the oldest version that you can find archived online, from what I could find at least. I don't know, maybe version 5 was the first version, and but I'm really not sure why they skipped version 1 through 4. But if you know the history prior to version 5, then make sure you mention it down in the comments below. One of the biggest issues with trying to piece together the history of Hiren's Boot CD was that it was shunned by many people because of its use of pirated software. Many support forms wouldn't even allow you to mention it without getting your thread closed or even deleted. However, with most things that develop a bad reputation, it's kind of hard to eliminate that reputation once it's been created, and in this case, that's what happened to Hiren's Boot CD. Starting in version 11, which was released around 2010, all of the pirated software was removed, but its reputation remained. Also, it, it's kind of a gray area considering the fact that it still included a version of Windows 98 and XP, which of course themselves are retail software. However, sometime between 2010 and 2012, Windows 98 was removed and the CD simply contained a mini version of Windows XP, which technically was still pirated. But you know, official development of Hiren's Boot CD simply ceased in 2012 with version 15.2. And to this day, this is the last official release of Hiren's Boot CD that's available. I honestly don't think there's a straight answer to why it ceased. New versions just simply stopped coming out. In fact, if you look at the original developer's website, it's kind of a hodgepodge of random things, including baby backgrounds and numerous posts of jokes. Unfortunately, no explanation for why the development of Hiren's Boot CD ceased. Who knows, maybe the developer died or was arrested for software piracy. We may never know. So, at this point, Hiren's Boot CD was essentially a live Windows XP CD with a lot of freeware and shareware utilities that could be used to repair computers. It was a pretty handy recovery environment for its time, and there was a lot of unofficial releases as well. But unfortunately, in 2023, a Windows XP recovery CD isn't very helpful. Luckily, a popular archive and mirror for Hiren's Boot CD that was started in 2010 decided that they were going to take the reins and create an entirely new Hiren's Boot CD based on Windows 10. This new version of Hiren's is simply called Hiren's Boot CD 
PE. And it's because it's based on the Windows 10 pre-installation environment. And just like Hiren's Boot CD from the past, it's packed with freeware and shareware software that can be used to fix or recover Windows-based PCs. Now, while the original Hiren's Boot CD never really shook its reputation for containing pirated software, because Technically, they never really got rid of all of it, considering it included Windows XP, which was clearly not licensed. <laughs> Hiren's Boot CD PE gets around this problem by using the Windows 10 pre-installation environment that is licensed for recovery purposes. And because of that, the use of Windows PE in the new Hiren's Boot CD doesn't violate the Windows PE license. So. While Hiren's Boot CD still has a reputation of being a recovery environment that uses pirated software, it, in reality, the new Hiren's Boot CD is perfectly legal and no longer contains any pirated software at all. And <laughs> I know this reputation survives because I've heard many people mention it in the comments of previous videos when I've used it. So anyway, now that we've got that controversy out of the way, let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to use it. So as you can see, we're actually in Windows 11 right now. And the reason for this is because we need to actually create a USB drive with Hiren's Boot CD on it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is open up your browser and go to hirensbootcd.org. And this is the website. These are actually the people that are currently developing Hiren's Boot CD PE, which is in version 1.02 at the moment. So what you do is once you get to this page, you go over to the download and you scroll all the way down and you click right here where it shows the ISO. And I'm going to start downloading this first because it's a pretty big ISO. It's almost three gigs. So we're going to get that downloaded while we go to the next tool that we need, which is Rufus. And we've I've shown you how to use Rufus before, but I'm going to go over it again real quick. What I recommend is once you go to Rufus's website, you scroll down and get this one right here with the P on it. The P is the portable version. The standard one just installs it on your computer. Both of them will work, but I like to use the portable version. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna let that download real quick. Okay, so once we get these downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And then we're gonna go, wanna go into our downloads folder where both of our programs are right here. So as you can see, we've got Hiren's boot CD, the disk image right here, and we've got Rufus. So what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and launch Rufus. And when you do, go ahead and say yes to the user account control. And then from here, once Rufus opens, and there it is. Okay, you're going to get this question when it first launches, and I would just say yes and go ahead and run the program. Now, obviously, we need a USB drive, so I'm going to go ahead and plug a USB drive in real quick. And the USB drive that you're going to need for this is going to be a minimum of four gigs because obviously the ISO is a three gigabyte ISO, and I don't think they make three gigabyte USB drives, but if they do, that would probably work too. But I would find yourself one that's four gigs or bigger. I'm gonna be using an eight gig in this one. So once you do that, go ahead and push the select button so we can select the ISO. And we're gonna go ahead and go to our downloads folder here and select the Hiren's Boot CD ISO and click on open. And then once you do that, what I would recommend right here is for the partition scheme, I would change this from GPT to MBR. Now when it comes to MBR versus GPT, the reason why I recommend MBR is because you can still boot through UAFI. It's just that it'll also allow you to boot through master boot record or MBR. So it'll make the USB that you're creating a little more universal. So anyway, let's get back to it. All right, once you make those selections, you just go ahead and push start. And then it's gonna warn you that it's gonna destroy all the data on the drive, that's okay, hit okay. Make sure you're not doing this on a drive that has information on it that you care about because it will destroy all the data on the device. So we hit okay and hit okay again if you get this error. And there we go, it's gonna start creating it now. Now it's gonna take a minute for this to create. So I'm just gonna skip ahead and I'll meet you in Hiren's Boot CD. Okay, so once you boot into Hirons, the first thing you're gonna see is your little network setting up. And then once this is set up, then usually you should have network access. As long as your ethernet drivers or whatever other network device that you have is functioning. If you wanna use Wi-Fi, you have to come down here to the network icon, you can click on it there, and then you can actually set it up to connect to Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, I don't have Wi-Fi, so I can't show you how to set that up. However, now that we're in it, I wanna kinda of go through and show you some of the stuff it comes with. As you can see, it essentially looks like Windows 10. It has a Windows 7-ish style start menu in it, but it is a stripped down light version of Windows 10. And essentially all this is is Windows PE. But 
As you look around, you can see that you have your browser installed. So you have Chrome and Firefox. So depending on which browser you like to use, you have access to that. So you can always search the internet if there's some problem that you're trying to solve that you need the internet for, you do have access to browsers right here. So you can click on and you have internet access fairly easily right here. And then also it operates similar to a regular Windows computer. So you have your, this PC, which essentially has access to all your different drives and things of that nature. Now I've noticed that when Hirons boots up, it always uses the C drive as this is your actual computer's hard drive. So this is the hard drive for the computer that you're trying to work on. And then Hiron's actual boot drive is this one, it's the X drive. And then your USB drive that has Hiron's on it is the Y drive. But this is essentially how your My Computer is set up in any other system, and it'll give you access to different resources on the system that you're working on. So if you're just wanting to boot up in order to access some of the user files or something like that, you can easily do it just like this. However, I'm gonna go through some of the programs and utilities this thing comes with because that's the reason why we're here. So we're gonna go ahead and close my computer and we're gonna open up utilities right here. And also these utilities are also accessible from the start menu. If we click on all programs, it's exactly the same stuff as we're going through here. I'm just doing it here because it's a little bit, it's organized a little bit better so I can show you what's going on. Now from the accessibilities menu, essentially all you have is a couple of different accessibility tools in here, but you have to keep in mind, this is not intended to be an operating system that you use. This is a recovery environment. So they really don't have a ton of different accessibility features in here. So if we jump back and we go to accessories, as you can see, you'll see a lot of different Windows accessories here, like your disk management, your calculator and notepad, things of that nature, as well as regedit. And then moving on from here, if we jump back into our main menu here, we can go into administrative tools. This is gonna be related to Hiron's Boot CD specifically. So like the computer management control panel, device manager and stuff like that, isn't gonna be for the computer you're, you're actually on, but the recovery environment itself. And now that I've noticed it, there is one thing that's missing from here that I guess you can only get from the start menu. So so if you go into the start menu here, go into the administrative tools, you'll see the Windows memory diagnostic is in here. And this is really useful for systems if you think you might have a memory problem or something like that. However, there are better tools than the Windows memory diagnostic that can be used. But you know what? We've covered that in videos in the past. So if we move back now from utilities, we go into the the BCD and MBR tools. And then these right here, honestly, I've never actually used them, so I don't know how well they work. But they've got two different programs here, Boot Ice and Easy BCD. And you know, they might be good tools. Let me know down in the comments below what you think if you've used these before. Otherwise, let's move on to the next one. So in here, we got hard drive tools, and this one has a ton of different stuff in here. So if you come through here, you've got anything from data recovery to defrag, diagnostic for hard drives and storage devices. You have imaging for copying hard drives, partitioning tools, and security. So if we go through here from data recovery, you can see we got tons of different data recovery programs. In fact, we even have Recuva, which this is a program we covered in a video a couple weeks ago. But there's tons of other different programs in here that you can use. In fact, PhotoRec is also another really good data recovery program that you can check out. So if we scroll back into hard drive tools and go into defrag, it essentially comes with a defragger. But you know what? On modern computers with SSDs, defraggers are pretty much worthless. But if we go into diagnostic, there are several different tools in here that are actually very useful. One of them happens to be Crystal Disk Info, which I've covered in the past. But this program here essentially gives you your, your different smart readouts from your hard drive itself. So if you think you might have a bad hard drive and that's what's stopping you from booting into Windows, well, this is a great way to diagnose it. So if we go back into hard drive tools, we can now go into imaging, which if you happen to have a bad hard drive, then imaging software software is kind of important at this point. So one of the th ones that I recommend is Acronis True Image is a really good program. And what you might notice right here is Acronis. Well, Acronis is a retail program. And I thought I said earlier that there was no retail programs inside of this recovery image. Well, that is true. If you go into Acronis right here and you go into about, you'll see 
that this is an unregistered trial version. So if you'd like to use the full version of a Cronus, then you'd have to provide your own serial number in order to use it inside of Hirons. But they do keep the free version of a Cronus in here, so hopefully that'll be useful to you. But it is a very good program for imaging. Also, I've used Drive Image XML before, and this one is a pretty good program for backup for the most part. But they've got several different programs in here that you can use to image different hard drives. So if we move back into hard drive tools, let's go into partitioning tools. And this one right here, I haven't tried all of these programs in here, but I have used Isus Partition Master, and this is a great program for messing with partitions. In fact, I actually used this right before starting filming on this video in order to, you know, clean the partitions up off of my USB thumb drive that I was using for the video. But either way, this is a great program for doing partitioning. And this is a program that I've used in previous videos. So moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and back all the way back into utilities and we're gonna go into network tools. And then one of the things that I wanted to point out in this is if you go into this PC, and if you noticed before, it has all the different functions of a regular PC. However, if you click on map network drives, it looks like you can map a drive on a network, but it doesn't work. And I've tried for ages to try to figure out how to make this work, and it just simply doesn't work. However, while I was preparing for this video, I actually figured out a way to make it work. So what you do is don't go to the regular Windows map network drive because like I said, it doesn't work. So what you do is you instead you go to PE network, this little program right here. And when you open this one up, you go down into network drives, and then from network drives, you can essentially create a network drive right here. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna go Z, and for path, we're gonna to go to my NAS. So we'll just go into my data directory, and then for username and password, I'm gonna go ahead and type that real quick. And we're gonna push connect, and as you can see, it gives you this little window, so, and what you'll have to do is at that point, you just hit cancel. And then if you go back into this program again, which for some reason for me, it's not opening up. There we go, successfully mapped, and then you hit okay, and it shows you, it shows, shows that it's mapped. So if we actually open up this PC now, you'll see that now we do in fact have a mapped network drive. So moving right along from there, we can go ahead and close this. And also, if you wanted to go through this, this has tons of different settings that you can do in order to change different network information and things of that nature for Windows PE itself. However, for the most part, it's pretty much worthless unless you're wanting to map network drives to be able to back up data from a system that you're trying to recover. Other than that, I haven't found much other uses for this because like I said, this is a recovery environment. It's not meant to be a full-fledged PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and we're gonna go ahead and back off now and go into other tools right here. And from other tools, as you can see, this is a lot of freeware. We've got VLC Media Player, we have 7-Zip, we have Notepad++. So it has a lot of different programs that you may need in the process of repairing a system. So if we back up out of here, and then we go into removable drive tools, this will essentially give us a copy of Rufus and CD Burner XP. Now, most systems nowadays aren't gonna have a CD burner, but this one's a really, really good program if you are trying to create a CD for whatever reason. In fact, it's the program that I recommend to burn CDs with. And then Rufus, well, you know what Rufus is, is because we had to use that before we even got into here. So if we back up now and we go into security, this will give you a bunch of different programs that you can use for different repairs that you're trying to do to different systems. Like for instance, we have an antivirus folder where we have multiple different antiviruses that we can run offline scans on our regular Windows hard drive if we need to. So if we think for whatever reason we wanna run an offline scan, this is the way to do it right here. And then if we back off here and we go into key finders, you can see we can actually show different product keys and things of that nature that we may wanna find from within Windows. And then if we back off and then go into passwords, we can actually change our regular password for Windows. Now, I haven't actually tried to use any of these programs, but I'm assuming they work pretty good. This program right here, it 
identifies all of the different user accounts. And I'm going to have to test it out one of these days to see if it works well. But I've got other tools that I've used in the past. Either way, let me know in the comments below if you've used this and how well it works for you. So moving on from there, we can go ahead and close this and go back into utilities. And then we can go into system tools right here. And from system tools, as you can see, this is a lot of really important stuff like command prompt, our PowerShell, and things of that nature that we may need to use in order to fix different computers. Computers. And we also have hardware info. So if we go into there, you can go into CPU Z, hardware Z, hardware info, and spacey, spacey. I, you know, I've used the program before and it's a good program, but I don't know how to pronounce the name. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But backing up right here, we also have the entire system, or system eternal suite. So we can go through and do essentially everything that we need to do from the different sys internal suite. But you know what? These programs right here, I'm gonna have to do a separate video on just these different programs because there's tons of different stuff that you can do with these things. So I'm not gonna waste this video on that. We're gonna do that in a different video. So backing up here, next, next thing that we're gonna go into is Windows Recovery. And if you go into Windows Recovery, essentially it has one program. It's this LaySoft Windows Recovery. And to be perfectly honest with you, I've never used it before, so it may be really good. I don't know, but let me know in the comments below if you've used it. Now, if you've seen the pattern right here, I use Hiren's Boot CD for really specific things. Normally, it's backing up systems that I just can't save for whatever reason, and I need to get the data off of them. Or it could be for using the partitioning tools to be able to change the different partitions to help me boot the system if I'm having problems booting. I haven't used every program that comes with Hiren's Boot CD. I mean, it comes with a lot, so there's a lot to use. So there's many programs that I've mentioned that I plan to use at some point, at least I plan to test at some point, but I haven't yet. But if you've used them, let me know in the comments below on what you think and what some of your favorite programs in Hirons is. So let's get back to it, and I'm gonna show you some other stuff you can do with this. Okay, so moving along, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you guys, and this one right here is really good. I'm gonna go ahead and close everything. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to run System Restore from Hiren's Boot CD because running System Restore from another operating system doesn't really work. However, it can if you do it this way. So go ahead and open your command prompt. And once you have the command prompt open, you want to type rstrui.exe. Now, if you just run that by itself, obviously it's going to give you an error. To use System Restore, you must specify which installation to restore. Well, let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that again. And then we wanna click forward slash offline because we're wanting to use the offline operating system. And then we wanna tell it where that is. So go ahead and do colon, C colon, backslash, windows. And then when you hit enter, it'll go ahead and start system restore for you. And then from there, you, there you can hit next. And as you can see, I went ahead and did a sample restore point just for the purpose of this video. And then in order to run it, all you gotta do is click on it, click next, and it'll run System Restore. So as you can see, Hiren's Boot CD is an amazing resource for people who repair computers. Unfortunately, back in its heyday, I never used it because I was one of those people that didn't want to use a recovery environment with a bunch of pirated software. However, I'm glad it's been given new life and it's now likely the most usable recovery environment available. So this is definitely a tool that you should have in your arsenal. The question now is, will there be a Windows 11 version? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But with all that said, if you're starting to build up a pretty good collection of bootable USB thumb drives and you'd like to have a better way to organize them other than just throwing them in a drawer and hoping you can find the one you're looking for later, then check out this video where I set up a utility that can boot multiple ISOs from just one single thumb drive. It's actually a really helpful tool. Just make sure that you have a pretty good sized thumb drive for all those ISOs. As always, you guys have a great day.